This is the Oktobreska, Oktobreska, the October Revolution. I can't get my tongue round Russian yet. Formerly known as the Gangot, she was laid down in 19. 19- 09, she was Russia's first homebrew dreadnought, although she was actually the fourth to enter service. Her sisters all got into service before she did. Possibly not helped by the fact that around about 1914, before she was due to have her trials, she managed to collide with one of her sisters. This seems to have been a thing for World War I Russian battleships. Um, which one was it? The... I think it was the Aurora that was the butt of all the jokes in the Voyage of the Damned. Right. <laughs> Dach. Oh, gods. Yes, the Fujin. Um, we'll get to that. There is a reason why the Fujin is a ship I do not want to see if I'm playing the October Revolution. You'll have noticed that this thing looks like, well, frankly, something out of a Mad Max film. That's because in World War II, she spent most of the first year as a floating battery between Leningrad and... Uh, I forget. There's a major town on the other side of the channel near Leningrad, and I cannot remember the name offhand. My geography is similarly deficient tonight. Yes, I could call her Gangot, but technically this is the ship as she was in Soviet service at the end of 1942, so she's the October Revolution. It, it gets complicated, okay? Airbrush and history, that kind of thing. So, the Mad Max. I think that's going to be a better nickname for her. What basically happened is that while she was defending Leningrad, the Germans decided that they didn't want a 12-inch, 12-gun artillery battery parked on their flank. So the Heer whistled up the Luftwaffe, the Luftwaffe whistled up some bombers, the bombers went in to get said floating artillery battery, and much like the British and the Tirpitz, discovered that dive bombing and level bombing from altitude with normal bombs is not a good way to do it. They'd damage the revolution, the Soviets would pull her into repairs, they'd weld on a couple more flat guns, whatever they had lying around at the time, and they'd send her back out again. And this cycle carried on for pretty much a year, until by the end of 1942, this is what she looked like. And her flak complement is weird, to say the least, as a consequence. She has got 12 50 cal Russian DSHKs, She's also got two quad 50 cal British World War I water-cooled Vickers mounts, yeah, along with a 37mm 16 single barrel 70k, there are 16 of those doing 100 DPS, although that is with basic firing training equipped. And then, for good measure, they slapped on another quad mount 46k prototype turret that, you know, they just had lying around in September 42. On top of that, they got some 3-inch guns on top of the turrets, and I have to think that running the ammunition to those guns in the middle of an air attack, climbing up the turrets, squeezing past the power veins, while potentially the turrets were in action, must have been an interesting experience for whichever poor unlucky sod had annoyed the Commissar that morning. And then, just in case that wasn't enough, they slapped on some twin 76mm turrets, one on the bow, and then one on either stern flank, just in case someone got a bit too close to admire that aft. Her secondary battery is 520mm guns in casemate. She's a World War I battleship. What did you expect? Turrets? Sensible layout? And this is tier 5, so you know what? It's not gonna be a great performance from the secondaries. In fact, the only way those things are going to hit anything is if you have sacrificed serious numbers of dissidents because the hand of Stalin will indeed have to work overtime from beyond the grave for you to hit anything there. Jingles may be cliched, but occasionally he gets it right. <coughs> Which brings us on to the main artillery battery. She has, unusually for tier 5, she has 12-inch guns, 305mm. New York, of course, has got 14 inches. The... Uh, Congo has got 14 inches, the Orion, the upcoming tier 5 British, should have 13 and a half inch, even the British were upgrading by this point, so Gangot has got the smallest of the battleship guns at her tier. She's also got an interesting configuration. You can fire 
three barrels straight aft, not a problem if you don't mind replacing the flagpole afterwards. You get nine guns, fairly generous arcs off onto the flank. You can get nine barrels going at around about 20 degrees off the bow. Twelve guns on the broadside, come round to the forward quarter, and then you get to the forward barrels and, um, comrades, we, uh, we might have a problem here. <laughs> yeah, bear in mind that this thing was a floating artillery battery. Firing forwards was never really a concern for her in real life. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea if this is going to give her a minimum range firing forwards in the game. I haven't seen too much of it, but then again, I haven't needed to fire point blank at a target in front of me. So, uh, I hope nobody's in those flak turrets when I need to. Or maybe they we can just replace them afterwards. Who cares? Anyhow, 12 barrels on the broadside, 9 on the front. Reload is average, 32 seconds compared to 34 on the New York, 30 on the Congo, give or take. But she gets 12 barrels, so that does tend to make up for it. The other thing that is severely trolly about this ship is her armour. So let's have a quick look, get into the armour via. So you've got a 19mm 4N plate. You've got 13mm superstructure, so far so typical. You've got a 19mm aft end plate. And then the rest of the battleship is basically proof against any high X smaller than about 10 inches. The thinnest armour you've got is the 38mm on the deck. You've got 75 to 125 on the belt. I crunched the numbers last night and from what I remember... You, could, you need inertia fusing and at least 175mm calibre to get through with conventional high explosive. And even then, you need decades to do it. If you're using the German high explosive, you can do it with inertia fusing and 150mm. But other than that, 6-inch cruisers, um, yeah, good luck. <laughs> this thing, this thing appears to have been built to troll cruisers. The downside is that, well, that's a 225mm belt. That is actually thinner than Kongu's, if memory serves. Let's just pull out, yeah. Let's just grab Harana. I mean, yeah, 152mm, but if we strip out the externals, Citadel belt 203 no, Kongu has actually got a fractionally thinner belt, but then Kongu is um Kongu is seven knots faster. So hmm yeah. Interesting is not the word for this ship if you are in a light cruiser. If you're in a Cleveland and you don't have any torpedoes, um Yeah, I'm not sure how you're meant to fight this ship. I think the best option is just going to be to aim for the superstructure and pray. Or aim for the quarter, foredeck, because you've got this nice little giveaway as a aim point here, just where the deck kinks up to mount the flak turrets at the bow. That's your aim point there. And aft of number four turret, again, hitting the upper deck, upper, uh, the upper aft end there. That aft, by the way. Mm. Interesting design with this uh, double deck setup. I would have thought they would have just either built the deck up a bit, but maybe that would have made her too top-heavy. The compromises you have to make in ship design. Now, the armour might be trolley against 6-inch uh, shells and even most 8-inch, and it might well have a flak defence that's second only to the Texas, although it's you're still going to get bombers through, but you're going to lose some, especially in the mid-zone. The problem is her torpedo belt. She basically doesn't have one. That 13% reduction is with the uh, module f upgrade for damage control 1. Base torpedo protection on this thing is only 10%. So yeah, haha -ha fun. If you get torpedoed in this thing, you are going to feel it. Meanwhile, maximum speed is pretty typical for a World War One dreadnought. Decent, good turning circle, 630 meters. Rudder shift is meh, 12.6. I was tempted, I must admit, 
to see if I could do anything to boost that, but I don't think I can at tier 5. And maximum speed 23 knots, so very, very similar to the other World War I and interwar dreadnought rebuilds. Right, I've waffled enough, so let's just get her into a battle. Vodka engineering graph? Maybe, maybe, but um, <laughs> yeah, she can be, she can be interesting. Um, I've had her out a few times. She just bullies light cruisers. In truth, she bullies just about everything. So, ah, ha ha ha, right, this is about as bad as it gets for her. She is bottom tier. There are 16 inch armed battleships on the other team. In fact, there are three of them. We've got Koenigs with 14, possibly 15 inch guns. Yeah, not sure. And then we've got York. So I've really got six ships that I can bully. The cruisers, seven ships, sorry. I can't count either. And then two destroyers. So let's just get this on the go. And we've only got one destroyer. It's a Mutsuki. Right, well, you go and have fun, Dach. Meanwhile, I will be rolling in to support point C. Battle starts. Plan. Oh, and indeed, the Gangut. Uh, pretty much. Uh. Also, smile. You're on candid camera. And if you remember that TV show, you are as, well, as old as I am. Although in Britain it was more Beatles about. <sighs> the fact that Jeremy Beadle was never found beaten to a pulp down a darkened alley is one of the great and enduring mysteries of British television. Anyhow, let's get going. 23 knots comments. Oh, oh yes, there's something else I forgot to mention about Gangut. Um, you see this damage control? You see it's got limited charges. It has a 20 second reload and a 15 second work time. The usual battleship tact, well, cruiser tactic of setting a battleship on fire a few times and leaving it to burn. Yeah, that doesn't work. How old am I, Dark? I... I'm pushing 36, okay? I'm old. I was born in 81. Anesthetics before the Citadel, please. Um... Sorry, comrade. Fresh out. Although, it has to be said that with the 12-inch guns on this thing, unless you're in a cruiser, you're not going to eat too many citadels. The 12-inch uh, penetration on this thing is not great. Yes, I am old. Because that is how they designed her necks. Um... I have no idea why they changed the layout. I suspect it's to do with the way they built the bridge superstructure. If you look at this, if you try to set number two touch to rotate forwards, you take a chunk out of the funnel. That seems to be the usual reason. And equally, number four touch, if it tries to rotate forwards, is going to smack the aft superstructure. So I think they got forced into it by where they had to put the bridge, where they had to put the engines, therefore where they had to put the funnel trunking. So, as I say, I'm pretty sure they didn't necessarily have much of a choice with that design. Gangut's other weakness, by the way, is that she doesn't carry aircraft. So, no spotter plane. That 16.8 kilometers, yeah, that's all you get. Anyhow, like I said, pretty generous firing arcs on number three types. We've just lost number three there. I mean, that is what? 25, 30 degrees off the bow? and I can still get nine barrels to bear. I've lost number four turret, but that's it. Of course, we are sailing straight into a confrontation with a Colorado who has ooh, eaten rather a lot of torpedoes. That is what you get for not torpedo beating. And this from the land that invented rock and roll. Down you go, my friend. Down you go. Haven't had to fire anything so far. Right, the York is coming in. He's giving me a nice flat board. So I give him about 20 offset. Rounds out. Let's see where that goes. Didn't get spotted on this. Yes, one other hilarious thing about Kangut. Um, I got her Captain Concealment Expert. So she has an 11.4 kilometer detection range. That's on the par with most cruisers at this tier. In fact, I think it's better than some of them. 
So she can be a very, very nasty surprise for the incursion cruiser. Now, I only got one hit, so we're going to shorten the lead a little. Also going to check the angling. He's heading a little away, so aim high. Just kick the number four turret into line. And then realise that I have probably just wasted around. Also, who put that island there? Hello, comrade. Um, rounds? Rounds? Boink. Okay, right. So I got my elevation wrong on that first salvo, not the uh, traverse. Still, the York's about to go, so let's swing out, dive through the Belfast smoke, which Comrade Doomsday has so thoughtfully left for us. And then we will start bullying the Frenchy. We actually need to turn starboard at this point because we need to seriously grab point B back. The Lemming train's gone into point C. Now we need to get it turned round. Momentum will do it to an extent. The Scharnhorst is up front, of course. Scharnhorst, tier 7, manages perfectly fine with 9 11-inch barrels. But, of course, Scharnhorst has a boatload of secondaries and they're actually sober gunners. Kick the brakes. Line on the Gareths on the air. Can't fire because Geohazard's blocking my shot and also can't turn in. So just slam on the brakes, let him get past. 30 knots, 30 knots, 30 knots. Take your time, my friend. There's no rush here. I just have a French cruiser that I want to abuse. Come on. Come on. Come on, that's more like it. This is an extreme range shot, but Gallus on the air is doing me a favour in turning in. Rounds out. Got detected. Back on the throttle. And I suspect these are going to miss horribly, but you never know. And, oh, well, wetted his deck, but as I said, it was an extreme range shot, so we need to close that down. Oh, hello, furry taco. Ducked into stealth, and Motsu, how's number three turret doing? And hello, Poi. Right, okay, lock on, target number three turret, adjust, rounds out, ranging shot to start with, which is probably going to provoke him to turn the end, but we've got the range more or less right. Waterline shots for the rest, although I think he might be in zone of immunity. And in fact, he's turning away, so the whole kiss and caboodle is going to miss. Shell grouping, well, you can you can see for yourself what the shell grouping is doing. It's, it's a battleship. Accuracy is never going to be its strong point. It is 220 meters dispersion from memory. Um, the Sigma is not laser grade like the Imperator Nikki, but I think Wargaming learned if they'd... If they'd made the ship as brutal as the Nikki, there would have been howls, even if they gave it away. Okay, round's coming down. Mutsu, are you going to ca play catch? Pop. Right, two shatters. Like I said, the 12-inch struggles against tier 6 and 7 battleships. Okay, there's also a Koenig. Now, I don't really want this kind of fight, but I'm kind of committed until I can duck past the island. All I can really hope to do is angle up. Hope that Ajutrix isn't in the mood for trying to get himself some Russian. And then kick round. So meanwhile, we'll hit the Gallus on the air again, or at least try to. We're probably going to miss horribly. Yep, again, ducked into range. And Koenig at nine kilometers. He's turning in right, so he's anticipated me. But I think I'm going to defilade. In fact, I've broken contact. And yeah, 16 inch just went nowhere. Target the Gallus on the air, just about reloaded. Parting shot, and then turn. Also load high X, because there was a Nicholas round here, and I want to be ready for him. Into the turn. Ooh, two solid smacks into the Frenchy. Only got 4,000 damage. These shells, like I said, little anemic for tier 5. Yes, I believe the plan, at least on the Russian server, is to give the revolution away. So I think they'll do a mission, do what they did with Graf, do a mission chain to start with and then put the ship on sail. Maybe not do quite what they did with Graf, because we all remember the Christmas convoy riot. And, oh, looky, hello, underaged boat. 
and he's not even in position to launch his torpedoes either. <laughs> I'm going to jail for this. Guns are loaded, high X is prepped. Even the secondaries might hit something at this range, and you know what? I think he might have crashed. Or he's being very clever and setting up for a torpedo launch. Yeah, he's he's seen the destroyer. He hasn't seen me. Hello, cutie. Yeah. So, um... At, uh, ha, 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 yeah, uh, three kilometers, the high X dispersion is pretty good on these things. Set AP for the next round, just patch up the worst of that damage. We've got a cap going in B, but we're going to have to go boss the close, so get angled. Going to have to sacrifice number four turret. Oh, believe me, I'm slowing down. It's just that this thing doesn't exactly come with brakes. High explosive out. Okay, that's ground appreciated. Keep forgetting that it remembers which channel you're on. Okay, not going to waste a damn con on the turret. Just going to wait for the reload. 12 seconds. He's still burning, which is kind of handy. So either his damn con's gone or he, he's got two fires going. He doesn't want to. I'm just going to blow that. Can afford to waste a damn con and wait for the broadside. Hit him. Rounds go over. Rounds come down. Rounds rearrange the airfield. And now I'm in position to move again. 17 seconds on the cap. The Koenigs had to turn away, which then gives me a chance to get broadside on to a Jutrix in the Mutsu. Right, let's see if we can give him the good old number three hello. Pop oh, right, his Damcon really was on cooldown then. He wasn't just trying to be tactical about it. Mutsu, say hello. Let's see, two rounds out. Didn't quite give enough lead. Three penetrations, only 5,600. Like I say, these 12 inches kind of lack the damage, although that did almost as much damage off two and an overpen, so there's a slight troll element going on here. All stop and um, back up. I think I'm going to go out of the smoke before. Yeah, I'm committed. Break away. Start turning. Need to angle against those 16 inch guns before Judrix realizes what's going on and gets them round. He has got the guns round, so I need to get angled before he can reload. Come on, beat the reload, beat the reload. Lock on for Otaka. Other problem, of course, it's a battleship, so you know, it kind of um, turns the ship faster than the guns. And who's going to get that, I wonder? Ow! Ow, that hurt. That was Mutsu, I think. Okay. Patch that up. That just leaves the Frenchy, who is... He's trying to set me on fire. That's cute. Down comes the high X. Missed completely. Problem is, I think Mutsu overmatches the... Well, he overmatches the upper part of my bow, at least. So I have to be a little careful. The York... 203 mil guns, and if he's got inertia fusing on those things, yeah, he can get through my deck. He's not got inertia fusing on those things. He's, um, heh heh heh, yeah. Oops. Now, only target I've got is the Mutsu, so he's trying to angle against me. Fine, just take rolling salvo as I get it. And turn into pursue. We're going to have to settle up on that York. And wow, the enemy team has pretty much folded. 1400 damage off a single hit. Tapped another one. Didn't get any damage off that second penetration. Probably just clipped a module. Guns forward again. Targeting the Gallus on the air. Half an eye on that York as well, of course. And back into concealment. Because, you know, 11.4 kilometers. All right, bonjour, mademoiselle. You are so entranced by that young, sweet Japanese schoolgirl over there that you should perhaps have been paying more attention to the burly Russian coming around the corner. And I should have been paying more attention to my leading. Smack. Oh, and put the fire out. The ship is on fire. Our team is 
And Mutsu goes down as well, just burns out. Patch up the damage, which leaves one rather surprised and lonely York, who's suddenly short on Camaraden. Okay, he's in a starboard turn. Defensive. That should do the trick, although he's breaking away, so he may evade. As you can see, grouping's generally pretty tight on the Revolution shells. Makes her very good at bullying. Of course, if you're an incompetent shot like I am, then it's going to be interesting. Hmm. I will say this for the HSF Grash Bay, however, They've, it's a nice ship in its own right. I'd have to go back to the anime and have a look at the colour scheme they used there. Harakaze is interesting. Um, if you fit her out with the 10 centimetre gun, she's, an, she's a nice cross between Kaguru and Akazuki. Although she really, really needs inertia fusing and demolition expert to get the most out of her in that configuration. So, bottom tier and, well, okay, that destroyer was unlucky, but also managed to pretty successfully bully a few other ships as well. And came in second with Mutsuki, coming in first by some considerable margin. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get for underestimating Denial-chan, isn't it? All right, let's go again, and we'll make this the last game of the stream. Purely because I've been going for almost two hours at this point, and oh, oh, this is either going to be very, very good or very, very bad. We have a Kaze, a pair of 170s, a T22, three cruisers to bully, and a load of low tier battleships. Yeah, this could be interesting. <laughs> right, now the question is to load AP or high explosive first. Mm -hmm. Yes, the problem is that Harakazi only gets three barrels if you load her up with the 5 inch L52, I think it is. Um, small boats. Or it could end up with the small boats hammering the gun. Which, remember, I only have 13% torpedo reduction. And it takes a while to reload these guns. And I just happened to get that one little Nicholas at three kilometers completely by surprise. So, yeah. It could end like that. It might end with me being blown out of the water by a swarm of torpedoes. Never ever underestimate what the small boats can do, particularly when one of them is an Isakaze the little torpedo-spitting devil of Tier 4. She doesn't get the Type 92 anymore, but that Type 7 she gets is still quite capable of messing you up if you don't treat it with a bit of respect. Uh, um, if, if the October Revolution ends up against the Yamato, something is very, very wrong. Very, very wrong, because, um, yeah. No, mind you, now when I think about it, the October Revolution could probably try to go bow on to a Yamato and have at least some success right up to the moment that the shells found that uh, 19mm upper echelon. Hmm, Gangut versus Yami Daka. I think it would last right up until the moment that, um, yeah, let's not test it, shall we? But, speaking of which, first small boat victim of the day. Boom, boom, and boom. And switch to high explosive. That would have been a kill, but the Clemson decided to get there first. Right, high explosive loading in 20 seconds. 1v170 getting a bit too... Ooh, the sailing rock... Well, well, well. It's amazing who you meet in games, isn't it? I'm not the only person out getting a new silk fur coat. Oh dear. Good night. Come on. Yeah, he's not even going to wait for the torpedoes. Boom. Right. However, Desertanido goes down to the Wyoming. 
and there's the de Gaia 3. So 155 millimeters meet 305 millimeters of high explosive. Just because that's what I happened to have in the breach at the time. Ow. Now he's going to pop his damn con for that because he didn't really have a lot of choice. Not with two uh, fires and a boatload of other pain coming his way. But if he's good enough to keep sailing straight forwards. Uh -huh. Yes. And if you call her a hotel, she will fire in anger. Okay, well I've got a fire myself that I don't really care because Dugai... Bonjour, mademoiselle. You should not have turned broadside to a battleship. And here is your demonstration as to why. That dispersion. Okay, and as you see, his 155 is just bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. However, the Dagai has managed to duck behind the island, so I need another target. Right, turn to port and lock on to the Kaiser. Come here. Right, so fire one. As I say, we've actually beaten his fire again, and I am now flat broadside. This is going to hurt. Ow. Still, clipped him in return. I shouldn't have put a... Uh... Oh, dear. Robin, what have you done? Oh, dear. Yeah, about that. <laughs> okay, right, let's see how he handles this. Ow. That's coming down, another 3,000. Uh, penetration... Yeah, penetration on these 12-inch shells is not great. Damage is a little anemic. I think that's how they're balancing her. So, um, mind you, he is pretty much dead in the water at this stage. And everyone else is just lining up for a piece. Oh, it's it's my kill. Come on, waterline shots. Rolling fire. Come on, come on, come on. Need a new pair of shoes. Yeah. Not doing all that much against a battleship belt at 10 kilometers, is she? Angle up fast because the reverse may not be the case. The Kaiser has got... Well, I don't know what the Kaiser's got offhand. 12 inch as well, I think. That whole zone of immunity thing. Rounds out. How hard can it be to beat one battleship to death? That hard. Alright. And the October Revolution goes down. Meanwhile, we're badly out of position and we have another Kaiser to deal with. Also, their main force is actually over on the other side. It's down in the southwest. Okay, so... Crank the guns round, get them port side. We'll turn southwest, go through C and B, and engage on the port side as we go. So, prep for artillery battle, port side, and grab fresh crate of vodka while we are waiting. Oh, we, Melon Chan just went down as well to Kongu, so... Okay, that's interesting, lad. 300,000... Bear in mind, that is what the Russians are getting. We're in the European Union. What we get can be... different. Well, there goes the Kaiser. Right, so... Hold that course for a second. We'll just run down into sea. And Mama Hosho's off in the northwest. She probably should start running east, although I think Marionette has actually figured this out. Okay. Hit one of those lacune for the moment. So just take a brief pause and crack open a quick drink while we're waiting. A little bit of an air spot. Now then, what else we got? We have a Wyoming. Uh, let's see, the Wyoming's coming into B. That's going to be our next problem. We're going to have to engage the Congo pretty much simultaneous to that. Although the Kaiser is also going to engage, so maybe we can double team the Wyoming, make a quick job of that. Kongul Sun is going off after our carrier, so is the Isakaze. I think they've smelt carrier and gotten carrier fever as a consequence. And in fact, yeah, bingo, they 
there chasing the carrier. Right, Mama Hosho is going to perform one final service for the team. Meanwhile, we need to target this Wyoming. Get the number two turret in line. And oop, one, two, go on. Torpedo defense. Overlap kills over. There's no point going for manual AA on this thing, by the way. Nothing's over 85 millimeters. Although it's pretty effective all the same. Knocked down three before he even managed his drop. Bag the fourth, and there's the fifth. So wiped out the entire wave. And as a consequence of doing that, I have. That Wyoming is just angled enough that. High explosive? Really? Here's what you fire in the battleship duel, comrade. Bingo, 5,000 hits. Okay, now we managed to get the defence. We partially reset the cap. I can kick out a bit further, try to get number two turret into play. He's decently angled against me now, so we'll target his turrets. Bingo, turret disable and another three defences. So that gives me a moment. I can stay angled to him. Switch fire onto the Kira, but I'm not going to do that immediately. We'll just handle that. And in fact, now I've left myself a problem because in order to hit the Kirov, I need to angle up. I need to break my angling against the against the Wyoming, although what I can do is turn in, except that I'm going to take a close pass. You think you can set me on fire, don't you? Good luck with that. And, oh, Kirov reporting, possibly straight to hell. Ow! Oh, hello, Kongu. You made slightly better time than I thought you would. Right, I am not quite in the mood for suicide yet. It's not quite a lovely day to die. To oh! You are kidding me. I, sh I should have gone for the ram. Okay, managed to stop that. Didn't flood, but his next secondary hit is going to bag him a close quarters expert. Run it aground. This is... That was not intended. I, sh I should have just rammed. Still, 47,000 damage. Could have made it close to 70, so, yeah. So, yeah, that's what happens when you make a mess of a game in the October Revolution. Um, decent performance. Teams came out fairly even. Uh, although that Congo is probably going to swing it for them now, and the fact they've killed our carrier means that well, both carriers are dead, so perhaps not so much. Ah, yeah. Those 12 inches are a little anemic, is all I can say. Right. Um, let's, let's just call it there. So, ladies and gentlemen, the October Revolution. Not sure how she's going to be available in the European Union just yet. Um, I would assume that we're going to get something fairly close to the Russia, or... Russian server, or there's going to be a riot on the boards. But I am going to wrap the stream up there. We've been going for just over two hours. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming. As always, selected highlights will be on the YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash usual. And should you wish to follow my random witterings, then stop by twitter.com forward slash usual to pick me up there. That's one of my principal ways of generally rambling about the world in, well, the world. Also, Newport. I I kind of like the Yokosuka port, so it's nice to have something a bit more modern back, even if it's less obviously sci-fi. No solar panels this time. But, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, that has been Shipstream, I have been Yisrael, and the game has been World of Warships. Farewell.